Live from Paris, France. We just had the most amazing dinner. Insane. But they just kept bringing you more and more. And, and literally the whole entire time we're staring at this. <laughs> Right now you're probably a little confused how we got here, so let's go back to where we left you before, which was on our overnight layover in New York City. This was JR's first time to Europe, so we took advantage of the new budget airline Norse and we got our first class seats. These bags came in handy because we were traveling in our backpacks, so when we needed extra space, we just pulled these out and then folded them. We got so much free food. I don't know if you'd call it free because we definitely paid for this, but it was way cheaper than you'd think to have these recliner seats. And I'm sorry, but you cannot disagree with me on recliner seats on an eight hour overnight flight. It's almost a necessity. They also gave us two meals and limited snacks, water, and alcohol. Oh, and a blanket too. We didn't sleep as much as we thought we would because we were so excited about these fancy seats. This was JR getting off of the plane for his first steps in Europe and their Uber driver was so sweet he took us by the Eiffel Tower just so we could see it. Coming from the editing chair and I have zero footage of how we got from our cars to dinner that night. And I know exactly why we didn't because we were exhausted. <laughs> we didn't red eye overnight. So we just really screwed ourselves. We took a nap. It wasn't supposed to be that long of a nap. It was supposed to be a 20 minute, let me rest my eyes. And it turned into three hours. So we woke up in a panic, we got ready and then it was raining and we were running. <laughs> I was in my little sandals sprinting. I was sweating and my hair was drenched. Back to the video. <laughs> This was one of those happy accidents. We actually came to this restaurant for the view. Obviously it's amazing, but we hadn't even looked at the menu until we sat down and it was a seven course prefixed menu, very expensive, but it was worth every penny. Each course they would bring to you, they would explain where the ingredients were from and how they made it, which was such a personalized experience that I've never experienced before. Here, I, I don't know why, but they thought it was my birthday. We did not tell them that. They just brought over a dessert with a candle and told me to blow it out. Then just to make our night even more special, they took us past their gates on their restaurant balcony and showed us this amazing view. She said, you have to follow me. This is the perfect view of the Eiffel Tower. And then she grabbed our phone and took a bunch of pictures of us so that we'd have that memory forever. Now this little TikTok trend that Jared decided to surprise me with comes into play in our next video. So you'll have to come back to watch because even though I'm confused here, I absolutely get it later on. We'll figure it out later. Live from Paris, France. We just had the most amazing dinner. Insane. Like more experience than anything. I mean, we like our foods, but we don't really eat like real five, fancy. Yeah, yeah. it's like a five course nice meal that they just kept bringing you more and more. <laughs> and literally the whole entire time we're staring at this. this. We're here to tell you what to do if you only have like five hours to spend in Paris or at night if you're going to do a quick layover. We start out with dinner like this. Then we will catch you tomorrow when we do a quick couple hours before we hop on a train to our next place. See you guys there. Now, I've been to Paris a couple times and this was by far the best view of the Eiffel Tower. It's a little hard when you don't do something like this because you are so close to the bottom. We walked over there and this is what you would typically see if you decide to walk to the Eiffel Tower. And it's a little hard to get that full Eiffel Tower view. So if you have a chance, go sit somewhere and take it all in. We actually stopped here on our way back to our hotel. This was a place that I found with my sister the last time I went to Paris. But this was the first time I tried their creme brulee, which was amazing. And JR had the mule, which he loved too. The next morning we had a few hours to spend before we had to catch our train. So we walked into this cafe. It was random and on the street that we happened to be staying on. This is why I love traveling and going with the flow because you never know what you're gonna walk into. This little cafe basically only spoke French, which was part of the charm of us trying to figure out what we were ordering. And it ended up being amazing. 2022. Great job. We walked around for a bit before we had to head back to our hotel to grab our bags and call an Uber to get to the train station in time. This is good to know if you've never traveled abroad before, but Uber is in a lot of different countries and it's just your typical app. So we used Uber everywhere we went. And this time in particular, the guy was so slow 
We ended up missing our train and this was JR's face when he realized that we missed it. We hadn't talked about it yet, but we did do the whole trip on a Eurail pass. It made it really easy to change trains whenever we wanted to. It was like a flexible way to travel. I'd recommend it to anyone. It's a little confusing, but I might do a video later on just to help explain it. These are toilets and if you've never been to Europe before, I just wanted to touch on the fact that you do have to pay for toilets. Not much, but you should have change in your pocket for those instances when you're out and about and you need to go to the bathroom. Train travel in Europe is honestly so convenient because it comes every 30-45 minutes. We really didn't have to wait long even though we had to take a later train. This is us getting onto the platform. Jared had a little bit of trouble. Platforms can be a little confusing, so you do have to pay attention to the platforms and what are called out. They only call it out 15 minutes prior, but we got on the train, everything was fine. JR was really impressed with how fast we were going, and you were able to see it online if you signed into their Wi-Fi. Another fun part about train travel are the changes. Sometimes you have to jump off and onto another train in less than five minutes, but sometimes if you plan it right, you might even get more than an hour, and you can actually get out of the train station and see a new town. We are now getting into Switzerland, so I'm going to leave you here for this video, but don't forget to like and subscribe and follow along. We're going to Germany, Oktoberfest, back to Switzerland, to Lake Como, Venice. We have a lot more in store, so we'll see you in the next one.